Yes guys, welcome from me, this is Championship Manager 0102, the Game On Challenge, Part 30. And boy, boy, since the last update a couple of days ago, we've got some breaking news. First things first, you'll see that I've taken that ugly mutt off the screen, namely myself, and I've replaced it with a still picture of the CM menu, as you can see there just below and under the like, comment, subscribe. Incidentally, if you haven't already subscribed, get your ass and subscribe. If you want anything to do it on CM, videos of any kind, any nature, any explanations, any guides, let me know, I will put it on the list. So, we, were, we are well into season 26 now on this network game. And uh, it just doesn't get boring. Someone asked me, um, they sent me a message on Messenger saying, have you not thought about starting a new game uh, in whatever league? And it's like, mate, the answer's no. Um, for the simple reason, when I do get time uh, to play a network game, it's going to be either this game or a free man game. The last thing I want to do is start one again. Um, it don't get boring. And when we have breaking news, that's why. Because, as I say, breaking news, Matt has left AC Milan I have left River Plate. So this is what keeps the game going. Keeps the game alive. Keeps it going in terms of not boring. Um, question is, where have we moved? Well, spoilers alert. Nah, well, spoilers alert. You should be able to... Uh, no, you, well, you get a rough idea where I've moved to. It's a team that plays in red. There you go. That's a little spoiler for you. Uh, so Matt left AC Milan after uh, last season he won the title and he came up short in the Champions League. I've left River Plate after, well, half a season. The clo We had that entire closing stage and we won it. And uh, we leave River Plate in, um, in superb form, looking very convincing on the opening stage of the new season. In the cup still, but it was time to go. Now, Matt left first. And Matt left, and I'll tell you where he's gone in a minute. And I left about a week later. I think the job came up, where I've gone to, came up just as Matt accepted his job. Are you ready for this? We'll go to me first. Ready? Boom! Manchester United. We are at the theatre of dreams. Manchester United, um, who have sort of not won the title for a good few years yet. Um, now, the squad isn't good. It, it, it really, and, and spoiler alert, there is Matt. Matt is Chelsea. Um, so Matt is Chelsea. Uh, he's got a slightly weaker squad than mine, it would be fair to say. He's got a little less funds. But the bottom line is we are both, both going to need to uh, spend this year just to, to build. There's no doubt about that. Matt has already made his transfers and I've made a couple of mine. So mine are uh, from Andy Harris. That one was a pre-arranged deal. So Andy Harris arrives, who arrived, of course, from Inter. Uh, Nuno Faria, uh, goalkeeper, uh, Gratchev, I have to get a work permit on him. Sol Mansell, never heard of uh, never heard of him, I don't know who, the, who his uh, pre-gen may be, but uh, nevertheless, um, decent player. Uh, and um, what I believe is Van Bommel, no, maybe it's not Van Bommel, I, I forget who, who, Winter maybe, I don't, I don't know, whoever that is, solid. So uh, we've got five, we've still got two more players. Uh, we'll go to uh, Matt in a moment. We'll start with myself then. Um, what can I say? Um, we're in the UEFA Cup. Um, more about the UEFA Cup in a moment, but we are still going strong. And what we'll do very, very quickly, we, we will go to Chelsea. Chelsea's transfers uh, start from Ron Rowland. Um, Rowland Valen Valenti, Valenti, shall I say, sorry? I'm trying to think. Oh, he's made seven then, it looks like. Norden. Uh, Hagland, great player Hagland, although I'm surprised actually because he's really naturally a winger, didn't even spot that before, uh, Ronin, I think he was on a, he was on a release clause, what, yeah he was, um, Johansson, decent, decent goalkeeper, and Dos Santos, so Matt has made his entire seven transfers, now this is the thing you see right, so that's where we're at in the table, uh, I've obviously got a game in hand, I did play Matt already, it was our first league game and I won 1-0, I got knocked out of the League Cup um, to, Dar I want to say Derby, where was it, was it Derby, it was Derby, there you go, so my first game was Derby in the League Cup, we got knocked out, first league game was Chelsea which we won, and we've recently just drawn at Bristol City which is a bit shit, but the here's the thing right, so Man, uh, Man United are in the UEFA Cup, as you can see right there. Okay. 
Now I'm going to show you where Man United finished last season. They finished fourth and didn't make the Champions League. Now, I could, I come up with this ages ago that about how really how much do they change? You know, uh, the um, the numbers going into the Champions League, the UEFA Cup. How frequently does it change? And and I've never known it to change in England. I've seen it on this game. I, in, I've seen it uh, alter in Italy, where one season it was three that went into the Champions League. One season it was four. And I saw it in Germany as well. So basically, right? Uh, Mac says to me, he goes, he goes, Mike, I'm not in Europe. I went, all oh, right, okay. And he says, um, don't really understand why, because I finished fifth. So Matt finished fifth, not Matt, but Chelsea finished fifth in the league last season and didn't make Europe. Now, it took me a little bit of working out as to why they weren't in Europe. Um, but also, so just so there weren't any um, malfunctions of any kind, I looked at Liverpool, who were available, may I add. This is my former club, I think. Uh, bear in mind, Liverpool, and just to remind you there, Liverpool, there you go, they've been kings. That uh, they, I did read somewhere, though, that um, they were only secure. Yeah, oh, they're only okay now, shit. Now, Liverpool, as it happens, they, they finished sixth last season, and they, too, were not in Europe. So I'm thinking, hang on a minute, what the fuck's going on here? So, um, so obviously, I looked at the... Uh, the coefficients uh, table, and I realised that England are down to five. Now, like, as I said, I've never known this to apply to England. I'm never, uh, maybe it's because I don't really pay attention to an ODB game so far in. So England only have three Champions League spots, three UEFA Cup spots, and one into Toto. Now, get this. So the three Champions League spots went to the teams that finished in the top three, which I believe were Liverpool, uh, Liverpool Arsenal, and Portsmouth. Fourth place was Man United. They go into the UEFA Cup. The FA Cup winners was Portsmouth. Now, they beat, I think it was Aston Villa in the final. Portsmouth already in the Champions League. Portsmouth are the second team in the UEFA Cup as runners-up. The League Cup, I think that was West Bromwich Albion. Uh, they, too, they, too, go into the UEFA Cup for winning... Yep, they did. Oh, did they? I'm sure they did. Yeah, there they go. So, West Bromwich Albion won the League Cup. So, they too go into um, into the UEFA Cup. And it was Ipswich, who finished 10th last season, who got given the uh, Intertoto. It, it's bizarre, isn't it? So, finishing 5th and not going into Europe is pretty fucking shit, isn't it? That is so shit. The way I read it is, when I was at Inter Milan before my before my River Plate stint, I won the sort of like I was it a hat trick of Champions League, and that's what's keeping Italy on top over there, as you can see. Um, I don't ever recall there being as many as nine teams going into uh, potentially into Europe for Italy. I knew that was the case for uh, Germany, and I've never known it for Italy, and I especially have, don't recall it in France. Um, so. I mean, you can see there by the, the coefficient, well, number, the rating, 80.32. That, that is absolutely horrendous. I mean, you think about it, right? If um, th there's a big gap, really, in that top five between England and Holland. But if Holland were, I mean, if PSV and Ajax were to start doing well in Europe, I think it's over the last two years. I think it works something like that. The last two years of uh, European competition determines where they sit in the coefficients table, or something like that. Again, the usual applies. If anyone's got any more intel on this, share it with us. But I think it's something like that. But I've never known anything like that with England. I always thought maybe this was just a bit of a fucking textbook uh, screenshot, really. But I realised that it wasn't the case in Germany. It was it was accurate in Germany, in Italy, and and I've but I've never known it in England. Well, I've not paid attention to it in England, shall I say? whilst we've been playing uh, and I'll show you very very quickly so I think it was Ipswich uh, Ipswich and they got knocked out the Intertoto at the first stage as you can see yeah they got knocked out and let's just check yes yeah, so Ipswich finished 10th and um, you'll see Aston Villa are the other side in Europe as you can see um, are they already out are they of course they are. Aston Villa are already out, and they're in the they're in the first division as well. Aston Villa, and of course they uh, got to the FA Cup final where they lost to Portsmouth, 
so as I said, Portsmouth, who I believe finished, uh, they were runners up, weren't they, Portsmouth? So Aston Villa go into Europe as well. That's how it works. Yeah, Portsmouth finished runners up. So I'm guessing uh, Liverpool. Let's just. No, no. So who finished? For, oh, right. Okay, we've got to. So what we're talking about? Liverpool didn't finish. So if Liverpool finished sixth, who finished third? So who finished third in the league last season? Well, this is interesting. Now I'm going to go and check this. Now who finished third? Okay, no. So we know Arsenal's going to be in it. Birmingham. There you go. Birmingham City. So let's just double check that. I'm guessing they finished third. Yeah, there they are. They finished third. Um, that is bizarre, isn't it? It is really, really bizarre. So for me, Matt. Well, Matt is out of transfers now for the new uh, for the con remainder of the season, and I've still got, as I said, I've still got two more. Now I've got one pre-arranged deal. Now let me remind you that pre-arranged deals do not count as part of our quota, although he's nothing special. John Shirley, he's coming from Carlisle. He'll just be for the race. I will keep it in, though, because he don't look too bad. I don't think Matt has got anybody. No, he's not. Let me remind you also that Matt used to be in charge of Man United many, many moons ago. So um, I will also show you something very, very quickly uh, with regards to Matt. Something I didn't show, I don't think, on the last um, video. I don't think I showed it on myself. So Matt's um, repertoire of, of jobs, there you see. He was Man U in 2013. So, um, I think, right, I'm just thinking, I, I was looking at this on myself uh, yesterday. Um, so, you can see me there. Uh, so, you can see Matt's uh, record. I hate, uh, Matt must hate that sacking right there. He hates that sacking. I know that for a fact. Uh, but whilst he hates that sacking, what I hate on mine is I hate the fact that I walked away from Dortmund over here. Um, I walked away. Um... So, my longest uh, stint at a club I worked at is, that it is Inter Milan. And as you can see, from Inter Milan to when I went to River Plate, as you can see, I weren't even at a River Plate uh, one, one full season, but fuck Argentina, it's shit. Um, so, from Inter Milan, I was there for what? Um, four and a half seasons, I think, and it was a good four and a half seasons. Now, what that means, right, from me and Matt's point of view, that was my longest serving job. Um, but what that does mean, Matt is, has had the longest stint at a club because he was at Milan for almost five seasons. Uh, and as you can see, the rest of them are all uh, here, here and there. So um, it's very, very entertaining. Uh, for me, we've got, I mean, we've got some familiar players, but we've got some ageing players. And this is a problem at, at Manchester United. We've got some real ageing players. There you see. Um, and that's why it's going to take some time. It really is going to take time. I've opted to go with my middleman setup. Uh, I didn't desperately need a goalkeeper, but you could argue, why did I waste a transfer on a goalkeeper? I'm thinking of the long haul, if I'm truly honest with you. I am thinking of the long haul. Um, in terms of my defence, um, it, like I say, it's not the greatest squad in the world. It is not the greatest squad in the world. There's some good, there's some good players, there's no doubt about that. Um, we've obviously brought in a couple of players as well. Um, but as Matt said, it's gonna. I think we're gonna need at least this season and next. Now, now the funny thing is, right, is with the Champions League quota only being three teams, that just makes it just that little bit more tricky. Um, and it looks like Liverpool will be a force. There's no doubt they'll always be a force. I can't even see Arsenal. Where the fuck are Arsenal? Oh my days! Look at that Arsenal. Shit in hell. So 14 games gone, and Arsenal are right down there. Let's have a look. I mean, yeah, they're the champions. What the fuck are they doing down there? It's fucking bizarre, isn't it? Okay. Um, so, Matt, I feel, as uh, he's got a slightly weaker squad. He hasn't really got the ageing players like I've got, um, in that sense. It, but he's, he's still got a... I mean, he's got a, he's got a quality uh, defensive midfielder there, real quality player. Haglund is who he brought, of course, I think. I, I'm intrigued to see if he's playing him. Oh, he's playing him just behind the striker, which is fine. Um, he's he's got he's building. I think the seven players he's got, 
they're not worldies. He even said he's struggling to attract um, the sort of players that he wants to, the sort of players that we're used to. But that was pretty much the same for me at River Plate. It was very difficult to go from Inter Milan to River Plate. Um, you know, it, it, it's very, it's very, very interesting. Um, something dawned on me though, right? Is uh, going back to the European thing and uh, the coefficients thing. Whoever was in the UEFA Cup last season, in fact, can we have a look? I'm intrigued about something. If anyone knows the answer, I think I'm. So, right. So it was Ajax against Espanyol. Let's hypothetically say it was a team not in Europe this season that won the UEFA Cup. Well, they would go into it again, wouldn't they? But would that come at the expense of a team? Oh, I don't think so, because I do know that that's a way you can have an extra place in the Champions League. Uh, and we've seen that before, of course. In fact, we're going to see it this season. We're going to see it this season, funnily enough. So let me just go to the Champions League. Um, you'll see that Udinese... Udinese won it last season against uh, Matt in the final, of course. And Udinese finished uh, ninth in the table. So they'll be in the Champions League. And there'll be five teams from Italy. Let's see if they've all qualified to the second phase. So there's Perugia. There's Udinese, the champions. Uh, there's Inter Milan, and there's AC Milan, so there should be one more team somewhere. That's that, the Roma, there you go, Roma. So there was five teams, five teams, and that's because Udinese won the Champions League. So in answer to my own question, I would imagine that if it was an English team, it wouldn't come at the expense of anybody. I don't think it works like that. Um... So that is it then, guys, part 30, breaking news, absolutely ridiculous really, uh, how it's all gone. Um, I did. We did do a stream um, was it yesterday, Saturday, we did a stream, I was going to upload it, but it was just so big, the file was ridiculous. Um, so that is where we're at then, I'm not sure when we're going to be on next guys, because I'm back working today, I'm not going to get home until like gone 11 o'clock and shit, uh, so I don't know where we're at, it might not be till the weekend. But until next time from me, guys, take it easy.